Well, it's that time of year again. Okay, and I want a little bit talk about welcome to trade school and some truths your instructors can't tell you. Okay, fall brings us the end of summer, brings us cooler weather, brings us the start of heating season. For some of us, the end of hurricane season. And for many, the start of a new career in trade school or career college. For over 25 years, I've been involved in for-profit education. First, training computers, software development, database and administration in corporate training for about eight years. I was a Linux system administrator in corporate training for three years. And then I taught HVAC in a career college for 14 years. So I'd like to think I know what I'm talking about. I also have a master's in education and a doctorate in education, besides being a um, licensed tech in four states and a licensed contractor in two states. Because I'm no longer working for an institution, I can tell you some truths in plain language and in a way your instructors are not able to. I want to try to give you the tools that you need to succeed. Be present every day. Be on time. Listen to your instructor or sometimes a mentor. Ask relevant questions. Demand answers for those questions. Admit when you need extra help. And then make the time to allow your instructor to give you that extra help. Do your homework. Participate in lab. If you're working in teams, all people should do the project. You'd be surprised how many times we have stu we've come across students over the years who do not like shop. If you don't like shop, what are you doing going into a trade? Don't have your mommy and daddy come into school and fight your battles. That is the quickest way to lose respect from everyone around you. All of you that are going to a trade school are over 18 years old. Your mommy and daddy doesn't run your life anymore. You do. Do not assume that your instructor is your best friend. They have 30 plus other students they have to be worried about, and they're paid about half as much as they would be making in the field. They, have, they want to be there to teach you. Realize your instructor is responsible for both your education and safety. That is why they have rules. That is why they expect you to follow the rules. That is why they're going to toss your ass out if you don't follow the rules. Submit your work on time. Sending everything in at the end of the term or at the end of the course just makes it more difficult in your instructor. You're going to get a lower grade, if a grade at all. Don't plagiarize. In case anyone's wondering, plagiarize means cheating. I can guarantee you, after four or five years teaching, every instructor knows when someone has been cheating. With technology, this makes it much easier. Because the original person who filled out the paperwork, their computer or their tablet or their phone has left a timestamp on that file. When everybody hands in a file that has the identical timestamp down to the second, I can promise you we know who did the work and who didn't. Don't whine about things your instructor has no control over. They don't control if the building's too hot or cold. They don't have any say about the calendar. They don't have any say a lot of times about the curriculum being taught. Don't whine about it. You have to suck it up and deal. In other words, stand up and be an adult. Blended learning and distance learning, they're here to stay. Get over it. If you can't learn by taking some personal responsibility for your education, then you're not going to succeed in the trade. There's no employer that's going to hand you everything and not expect you to read, perhaps watch a training video, do some online education in terms of keeping your skills current. They're not going to send you to face-to-face -face classes all the time because every time an employer sends you to face-to-face -face classes, they not only have to pay for your travel, but they lose income. You're not on the job. So you have to take your own responsibility and you have to deal with learning from the internet a lot of times. Your diploma alone is not going to get you a job. No one cares about that piece of paper. They care about your hands-on skills. They care about your grades. They care about your book knowledge. They care about your ability to regurgitate facts and procedures. They care about your attendance. They care about your attitude. And I put it in capital letters what your instructor has to say about you. Many schools have policies that your instructors are not allowed to give references. But 
there's they, your instructors are still active in the trade. They're going to come across your future employer. They're going to come across other technicians. They have friends in the industry. And all somebody has to do is ask the question, well, what about John Smith? Would you hire him? If you're a good student, if you know what you're doing, the instructor's going to say, yeah, I would hire him. He's one of my best students. He has real potential. If you're not a good student, if you're a pain in the ass, your instructor is going to say, oh, I'm not allowed to give references. Right there, that says a lot. The lack of positive reference, the lack of positive conversation is all that has to happen. And you won't get employed. The thing is, you can do it. Everything I listed here is possible. Most of you are paying good money to receive this education. When you've calculated out, you're paying between $60 to $100 per hour of instruction. That includes shop time. Don't waste it. But I will tell you, congratulations on a new path for the next 20 to 30 years of your life. When I entered the field as an apprentice, I was making $12 per hour. When I left the field to teach, I did 96000 that year before I went into teaching, including bonuses, overtime, and commissions. That is actually pretty good income. 